I am Lakshmi Prasanna, Assistant Professor, Department of ECE, Institute of Aeronautical Engineering. In this session, we will discuss about string instructions of 8086 microprocessor. So, coming to the instruction set of 8086 microprocessor, in the previous sessions, we have discussed about different classifications that comes under the instruction set of 8086 microprocessor. Okay. So, they are the first classification is data transfer instructions. So, in this classification, we have discussed about different data transfer instructions like move, push, pop, in, out, exchange. Okay, we have also seen the function of each instruction and the general format of each instruction. And the next classification we have discussed is about arithmetic and logical instructions. So, in this classification, we have discussed about different arithmetic instructions like addition, addition with carry, subtract, subtract with borrow, okay. So, multiplication, signed multiplication, division, signed division, okay, convert byte to word, convert word to uh, double word, all these are the arithmetic operations we have seen. And coming to the logical instructions, we have seen different logical instructions like and or XOR not okay we have also learned uh, all the general formats and the function of each instruction the next classification we have discussed is about program control transfer instructions so in these instructions are used to transfer the control to the specified address okay so in this classification we have discussed uh, about different program control uh, transfer instructions like uh, conditional and unconditional. Next, so machine control instructions. So, in this classification, we have studied about different instructions that are going to control the CPU like halt, wait, NOP, all these instructions. And next, we have seen uh, shift and rotate instructions like how to do the shift left operation, shift right operation and rotate instructions like rotate left and rotate right by including carry and excluding carry. And next we have seen different uh, flag manipulation instructions. That means uh, based on different flags like carry flag, interrupt flag, direction flag. Okay, so how to use the instructions in order to modify the flags. And next last classification is about string instructions. So, in this uh, session, we are going to discuss about this string instructions. So, the general format of each instruction, the function of each instruction along with the example. Now, so here coming to the string instructions, we have different string instructions. Okay. So, these instructions generally we will use when we are going to consider a string as an input or when we are performing any string manipulation operations, especially we have to use this string instructions. These are available in the instruction set of 8086 microprocessor. Now, so coming to the detailed discussion about this uh, string instructions, here string means a series of data bytes or a series of data words that are arranged in a consecutive memory locations. Okay. So, for example, if a string consists of a series of data bytes, if a string consists of a series of data bytes available in a memory at consecutive memory locations, they are referred as byte string. The name of that string, generally it is considered as a byte string. Okay. So, here data bytes means one byte is equal to eight bits. For example, if a string consists of a series of data words that are arranged in a consecutive memory locations, that string will be called as a word string. Word means 16 bits. So, here for example, 
A string may consist of numbers or characters. So, for example, if a string consists of characters, that characters will be arranged in the consecutive memory locations in the form of ASCII equivalent. Okay. So, if, for example, if a string of characters, that means if a string consists of a set of characters, okay. So, if a string of characters may be located, a string of characters may be located in consecutive, consecutive memory locations okay so if a string consists of a characters they will be located in the consecutive memory locations with their ascii equivalent okay so here but each character but each character is represented each character is represented with ascii equivalent Okay, so we know what is meant by here ASCII, A S C I I. American Standard Code, American Standard Code for Information Interchange. Okay. So, if you are going to consider a characters in a string, they will be located in the consecutive memory locations with the help of the ASCII equivalent. Now, here generally while considering a string, two parameters are very important. So, the two parameters are here, the starting or ending location of that string. Another one is the length of the string. Here generally the length of the string will be considered with the help of CX register. Okay, so we know CX register, it is a 16 bit register, it is called counter register. And here, while making the starting or ending address of a string, the incrementing and decrementing of the pointer will be especially dependent on the direction flag. So we know the direction flag will be represented with DF. Okay, so based on the direction flag setting, setting means 1 or based on the direction flag df is equal to 0, it leads to incrementing and decrementing the pointer by 1 if it is byte, by 2 if it is word. For example, if the direction flag is 0, okay, so we will call it as cld, clear the direction flag. So how we can make this df is equal to 0 means if we use the instruction cld, the df bit will be equal to 0. So, when this uh, uh, df is 0, it will be operating in auto increment mode. If this df is equal to 1, it means std instruction. Okay, set the direction flag. If this df is equal to 1, the processor will be entering into auto decrement mode. The contents will be decremented by 1. So, by 1 means incrementing or decrementing by 1 means if the string is of byte size. Okay. So, incrementing or decrementing will happen by 2 if the string what we have considered is of word size. Now, so here if it is byte string, index registers are updated by 1. So, here what is meant by index registers in a 86 microprocessor generally we have two index registers. One is SI. Another one is DI. So, SI represents source index and DI represents destination index. So, both are 16 bit registers. Okay. So, especially this SI and DI, these two are the index registers that will be used in the string operations. So, generally we want to consider um, any string as an input. We have to take a register SI. So, if you want to um, show the output string as an output, you have to see that string output in DI register, destination index 
register okay so while considering this string you have to consider the index registers so if the string size is of byte size the index registers will be updated by 1 updated by 1 means incrementing or decrementing by 1 now so if the string size is of word size the index registers will be updated by 2 that means incrementing or decrementing operation will be by 2 okay so how it will be incremented or whether it will be decremented will be decided based on this direction flag bit so if df is equal to 0 index registers contents will be incremented by 1 if it is byte size by 2 if it is word size if the direction flag bit is equal to 1 it will be operating in auto decrement mode so auto decrement mode means the contents of si and di will be decremented by 1 if it is byte size decremented by 2 if it is word size now so in both the cases we are going to consider cx register which is called a counter register so this counter register will be deciding the length of the string okay so whatever if it is word size string or byte size string in both the cases for every time the counter will be decremented by one now so here let us see what are different types of uh, string instructions that are available in the instruction set of 8086 microprocessor so the first one is here rep so rep represents repeat okay so rep represents here repeat repeat or repeat instruction prefix okay and the next string instruction is mu sb or mu sw so mov represents mu and here s represents string and b is byte mu string byte okay mov sb represents mu string byte okay and mov sw represents mu string word so for example if the string size is byte size we have to use the instruction mov sb so if the data present in the string is of word size we have to use the instruction mov s w and next string instruction is cmp sb so this cmp represents compare and here s is a string and b represents byte compare string byte okay so this is compare string byte okay so similarly here cmp sw w represents word compare string word and next string instruction is sca sb so this sca represents scan and here this s is string and this is byte sca sb represents scan string byte or word and next string instruction is lods okay so lod represents load load string okay so lod sb represents string byte load string byte okay and this is w it represents word load string byte or word okay so if you are dealing with byte size data you have to use byte instruction if you are dealing with string size data we have to use the instruction string word and next string instruction is sto sb so this sto represents store okay store string byte and here this is sto sw it represents store string word so all these are different string instructions that are available in the instruction set of 8086 microprocessor now 
we will discuss about all these string instructions in detail the function and also the example now so coming to the first string instruction it is rep so rep represents repeat instruction repeat instruction prefix repeat instruction prefix okay so in the string instruction what is the function of this rep instruction okay so generally this rep instruction is used as a prefix to other instructions it is not used separately this rep instruction is used as a prefix to other instruction so just now we have seen what are different instructions that are available under uh, string instructions like move sb compare uh, sb uh, load sb scan sb all these are different instructions okay so before to all these instructions this repeat is an instructions that we can use as a prefix now so here if we are using this repeat instruction as a prefix for other instruction that particular instruction will be operated repeatedly so how many times that same instruction that same function will be performed means until the counter becomes zero that means whatever here the value you are going to give in the cx register the same operation the same instruction function will be performed repeatedly until the value in the counter register becomes zero so as we know for each operation the counter will be decremented by 1 okay so like that it keep on decrementing by 1 repeatedly and the instruction will be stopped when the counter becomes zero now so here rep is one instruction which we can use as a prefix to other instruction again in rep there are different cases two rep uh, repeat instruction prefixes are there okay so there are repe and repz okay so this repe represents repeat if equal this repz represents repeat if zero that means if zf flag is set and another repeat instruction is here repne repnz so repne represents repeat if not equal repnz represents repeat if not zero that means if zf flag is not set so these two are the different repeat instructions that are available but here this general repeat instruction can be used as a prefix to all the string instructions okay but whereas coming to these two repeat instructions they will be used as a prefixes to only some string instructions they are cmp sb and sca yes that means the compare string scan string to these uh, string instructions only these two repeat instructions can be used as a prefixes but whereas this normal rep instruction it can be used as a prefix to any string instructions okay now so coming to repe and repz two types of repeat instructions okay so this repe or repz so this first one repe okay so it represents repeat if equal okay and this repz this repz represents repeat if zf is equal to 1 so here this zf represents zero flag when that zero flag will be equal to 1 means that means when that zero flag will be set means when the result is producing zero that means that during any operation if the result that is produced by alu is zero then only the zero flag will be set and next repeat instruction which we can use as a prefix to compare string or scan string instructions or repne and repnz okay so this repne represents repeat if not equal 
okay repeat if not equal and rep nz represents repeat if zf is equal to 0 that means if zero flag is not set okay when generally the zf is equal to 0 means if the result that means if any arithmetic or logical operation if it is not producing zero as an output then the zf flag is not set okay so here this repe function and this repz function both are same that means same operation can be performed by using any of the instruction and here also instead of this rep ne we can also use this rep nz because both the instructions perform the same function so any one instruction you can we can use as a prefix and next string instruction is here mov sb and mov sw okay so mov sb represents move string byte okay and mov sw represents move string word okay so generally here we have seen while considering a string we have to use the index registers okay so here index registers we can use is generally si or di okay so these two are the index registers and both are 16 bit registers only so when this move sb instruction is executed okay so it is used to move a string from source location to the destination location so here the source location generally we will consider we have all we have already seen that while considering a string two parameters we have to consider one is the starting or ending address of a string and another one is the length of a string so whatever the input we are considering it will be considered as a source and we have to keep that input source which we can call it as a source in the source index register which is called si register okay so you know if you are going to move that source string to the destination as an output we have to store that output string in the destination register which is called index register destination index register so when this move sb or move sw instruction is executed it is used to move a string from source location to the destination location so here the starting byte of the source string will be located at the consecutive memory location which will be addressed as ds si okay so here the string will be generally considered with the help of data segment and here to have the offset value we are going to use the index register si so the source string we have to locate in ds and si so if you are going to calculate the physical address of the source string how to calculate the physical address which is called starting address of the source means segment address into 10 plus offset address so we know the segment address will be getting from the segment registers and offset address from the pointers registers or index registers okay so here the segment we are considering is data segment into 10 okay plus offset address offset address we are getting from the index registers since here we are going to calculate for the source string we have to consider the index register source index okay so if you are going to calculate by using this formula it is going to give us the starting address of the source string now the starting byte of the destination string will be located at the consecutive memory location which will be addressed with es and di so es represents here extra segment and di represents destination index so in order to calculate the address starting address of the destination same segment address into 10 plus offset address okay so here the segment address we are going to get from the segment register which is called extra segment okay so extra segment into 10 plus offset address so here to get the 
starting address of the destination. Here, to get the offset address, we have to consider the index register, which is called destination index. Okay. So, using this formula, we are going to get the starting address of the destination. Now, so what is the purpose of this MUSB and MUSW instruction means? When this instruction is executed, it is going to move the content from source location to the destination location. That means it is going to move the data which is available in this location to the destination location which is addressed with ES and DI. Now, so we can use simply MUSB in order to do that function. Okay. So in the previous uh, uh, thing, we have discussed about the instruction REP. So REP means repeat. That instruction can be used as a prefix to other instruction. So for example, if we are considering this repeat instruction and we are using it as a prefix to this MUSB or MUSW instruction, what is the operation that will be performed means? Okay, so the data will be moved from SI to DI. That means the data will be moved from source location to the destination location repeatedly until unless the counter becomes zero. Okay, once if the counter, that is once if the value in the CX register becomes zero, the execution will be quitted. So the repeat instruction can be used as a prefix to move S to repeat until counter becomes zero. So when this MUSB instruction is executed, the index register will be automatically updated. Updated means based on the direction flag, the index registers will be incremented or decremented. Okay. But in both the cases, after each operation, the counter will be decremented by one. Okay. So here, if you see index registers will be automatically updated based on the direction flag. Okay. So for example, if the direction flag is set, the index registers will be automatically decremented by 1. If the string is byte, the index registers will be decremented by 2 if the string is word. Okay, So that is why if df is equal to 1, we will call it as auto decrement mode. Auto decrement mode. Okay, so for example, if df is equal to 0, we, ca we call it as auto increment mode. Auto increment mode. That means the index registers will be incremented by 1 if the string is byte size. The index registers will be incremented by 2 if the string is word size. Okay, so the index regist registers will be updated based on the direction flag. But whereas here, for each operation, the counter register will be decremented by 1 and at last it is going to become 0 after the complete data is being moved from source to destination. And so, for example, if you see here, MUSB or MUSW instruction. So, for example, let us consider here two locations. Okay, so one is used to store the source string and another one is used to store the destination string. Okay, so let us consider here uh, the data is available here. Okay, so here let us consider this is source and here this is the destination having some content. Okay, so while considering the string here, one thing we have to remember is we have to consider the starting address of the string. Okay, so let us consider here the starting address of the source is 5000H. Okay, and the starting address of this destination is 6000H. Okay, suppose let us uh, consider the transfer of 100 bytes from SI location to DI location. That means if you want to transfer 100 bytes of information from source to destination, 
how we have to write the program and how this MUSB and MUSW instructions are functioning. Okay. So if we consider here, this is 100 bytes. Okay. So we have to include this 100 bytes value into the counter register. But here you cannot write directly like 100. So what is the value of this 100 means? You have to convert that into hexadecimal. So 6, 4. The hexadecimal equivalent value of this 100 is 64H. This 64H value we have to write into the CX register. Okay. So for example, if you wanted to move, okay, so let us consider in the source, you have some data like 54, 63, 84, 95, 64, like this. So since this is byte, here the next location will be 5001 and the next location will be 5002 and so on. Because index registers, you will be having only incremented by one because this is a byte size string. Okay. And here this is 64H. Now, in order to move this uh, 100 bytes information from source location to the destination location, we have to use the instruction move SB. Okay. So, for example, here, uh, what is the function of this move SB instruction means? Here, the contents of SI, contents of contents of SI will be moved into contents of contents of DI. Okay, so in order to do this, you have to write the code like move cx comma 0064h. So what is this 0064h? It is a 100 bytes hexadecimal value. What you are going to load into the cx register, counter value, counter register value. Okay, next. And next you have to write cld. So cld represents clear the direction flag. That means here df is equal to 0. So, if df is equal to 0, it will be operating in auto increment mode. That means index registers will be updated. Okay. So, the contents of index registers will be incremented by 1 because it is byte. If it is word, they will be incremented by 2. Okay. Next, uh, you have to write here after cld move si 5000 h. Okay, so this 5000H you are used for the source. Source should be kept in the index register SI. And next, move DI6000H. Okay, so this 6000H will be moved into DI register. Okay, so destination starting address is this 6000H. And next one is, you can write repeat move sb instruction. So, if this repeat move sb instruction is executed, okay, so the content will be moved from si to di location and the si and di registers will be incremented by 1, okay. So, like this, the content will be repeatedly moving from si to di until unless the value of cx becomes 0. Once the value of cx becomes 0, it means that all the 100 bytes which are located in SI location has been moved into DI location and the operation will be quit. Okay. So, when this repeat MUSB instruction is executed, the contents from SI to DI will be moved. So, here you can see 54, 63, 84, 95, 64 like this. Okay. So, all the contents will be moved from SI location to di location until the counter becomes g. So, this is the uh, function of this repeat MUSB instruction. And next string instruction is CMP SB and CMP SW. So, CMP SB, it represents compare, compare string byte, okay or compare string word. So, this instruction is used to compare the two strings. That means, uh, it is this instruction is used to compare SI and DI. So, as we know, the comparison operation means the negative operation, the subtraction operation will be performed between SI and DI. 
okay that means the contents of di will be subtracted from the contents of si comparison operation means so here this instruction is used to compare the two string bytes or words anyway in all the cases the length of the string will be given with the help of this cx register which is called counter register now so here the comparison operation means generally we are going to do the subtraction operation so subtraction operation means here for comparison so the contents of si minus the contents of di so this is the operation that will be performed when this compare string byte or compare string word instruction is executed now so here during comparison in some cases the zero flag may be set or in some cases the zero flag will not be set okay so when the zero flag will be set if the byte present in the si and di are same during this comparison operation that means subtraction operation the result will be zero so in that case the zf flag will be set zf will be equal to 1 okay so sometimes the string in both the consecutive memory locations that is si and di will not be same in that case during subtraction operation it is not going to give the zero output so in such a case the zf flag bit will be equal to zero we call it as the zero flag not set okay so both the conditions may happen during this comparison operation and so the two strings where we have to keep means so the source string should be considered with the help of a data segment and index register is source index and the destination string we have to consider with the help of a extra segment and destination index register and in this case after comparison of each byte in the two strings the index registers will be updated okay so these index registers also will be updated based on the direction flag that means uh, whether the direction flag is set or whether the direction flag is cleared based on that condition the index registers will be working in auto increment mode or auto decrement mode but in both the cases the counter register will be decremented by 1 that means after each comparison the counter register will be decremented by 1 like that the counter register will become zero after all the bytes in si and di strings have been compared now so here let us consider the example uh, in order to uh, clearly understand about this uh, function of compare string byte or compare string word okay so in this case so let us consider here the two strings the two strings are here okay so here this is the source string and here this is the destination string okay so let us consider the starting address of the source string is here 5000 and the starting address of this destination string is 6000 okay so like this here if it is byte size in the consecutive memory locations all the data will be placed okay and here similarly in the destination location we can have different data available okay so for example here in the source string uh, let us consider here 54 in the destination like 44 okay 63 33 58 54 okay so any data we can consider in place of the source and destination okay so let us consider here uh, somewhere in uh, 5000a we have the data byte size cc okay so for example similarly in the location 6000a we have the data cc now so when this comparison instruction is executed the subtraction operation will be performed 
between the contents of SI and DI. Okay, so that means here the contents of contents of SI and the contents of contents of DI will be subtracted. Okay, so similarly consider in this case also if you wanted to compare 100 bytes of information present in SI and DI location, 100 bytes means the hexadecimal value equivalent just now we have calculated and we have got the value, uh, hexadecimal equivalent value of that 100 bytes, it is 64H. That 64H value we have to load into the CX register. Okay, until counter becomes 0, the comparison operation will be uh, continued. Okay, so in order to do that, uh, we have to write the program like move SI comma 5000 because we have initialized the source with 5000 location and move di comma 6000 so here di is initialized with the location 6000h and so after that we can write here move cx comma 0064h okay so it represents uh, we need to take 100 bytes 100 bytes in the SI and DI locations, okay. So after that, you can write here CLD instruction. So the function of this CLD instruction is clear the direction flag. That means clearing the direction flag means DF is equal to 0, okay. Based on the direction flag, the index registers will be updated. So if DF is equal to 0, it will be operating in auto increment mode. Auto increment mode means the contents of SI and DI locations will be incremented by 1. Okay. So here CLD, REP, CMP, SB. Okay. So this CMP, SB is the comparison string byte instruction. But this repeat instruction can be used as a prefix to any string instruction. So if this REP, CMP, SB instruction is executed, the comparison operation will be performed between this SI and DI until unless CX becomes 0. Okay, so if this REP CMP instruction is executed, operation, the function of this instruction is operation continues until CX is equal to 0. Okay. So here generally we have studied there are two types of repeat instructions. Okay. So instead of this REP instruction, you can use the two types of repeat instruction as a prefix to this CMPSB or CMPSW instruction. So let us see what will happen if you use this that uh, REPE or REPNE instead of this REP instruction. Okay. So if this REP instruction is executed here, operation continues until cx is equal to 0. That means if you consider these two strings, here 54 minus 44 will be uh, the operation that is performed and uh, 63 minus 33. That means here the byte what we have considered in the SI and DI that is source and uh, destination they are different. Okay, but uh, here if you see in the 5000A location, the content what we have considered is CC and CC here also. Both are same. Okay. So if this uh, CC minus CC operation is performed, the result will be 0. That means ZF flag will be set. Though ZF flag is set or though ZF flag is not set, if this is the case, that means if REP instruction is the thing what we have used, operation will be continued until counter becomes 0. Okay. So instead of this REP, if we are using the instruction like REPE CMPSB or REPNE CMPSB in that place, what will happen means, so if you are using REPE CMPSB, so what happens means here, so in this case, we can, we can call it as repeat if equal compare string byte 
okay so if you are using this repe cmpsb instead of repe cmpsb what happens means so in this case so zf is equal to 1 or cx is equal to 0 after satisfying this condition the operation will be quit otherwise continues okay so here when the zf flag is set generally we have seen in the previous example cc minus cc which we have indicated in 5000a and 6000a location if that cc minus cc operation is executed compared the result will be zero okay so in that case the zf flag is set okay so if it finds uh, such a case in between what happens means the processor will quit the operation it will not continue if no such a uh, same operand of source and destination is found the execution will be continued until cx becomes zero and then it is going to quit and so if we are using this rep ne cmpsb instruction so it represents here repeat if not equal repeat if not equal compare string byte okay so in this case what happens means so if zf is equal to 0 or cx is equal to 0 the operation will be quit otherwise it will continue okay so in this case when generally the zf flag will be 0 if there is no operand which is present in source and destination or same okay so this zf flag will be zero if the processor find such cases or if the processor find that the value of cx is equal to zero it is going to quit the operation otherwise it is going to continue so this is the uh, difference between this repe repne and rep instruction when they are used as a prefix to other string instructions and next instruction is scasb or scasw okay so scasb represents scan string byte or scan string word okay so scan string byte or scan string word now so this instruction is used to scan a string so scanning a string here means comparison operation only but previously if comparison instruction is executed the contents of si and di will be compared but here when this scasb scan instruction is executed comparison operation is only performed but here between the content of al or with the word in ax okay not si and di here the contents of al if it is byte or the contents of ax if it is word they will be compared with the string okay now so if the value which is present in accumulator and the value which is present in string when they are compared zero flag will be set now so if there is no match found the operation will be continued that means the comparison operation uh, with the value present in accumulator and string will be compared until the value which is present in the counter register cx becomes zero and so for this uh, scan string byte or scan string word instruction also this repeat instruction can be used as a prefix okay so especially for that uh, compare instruction and the scan instruction you can use two different uh, repeat instructions also as a prefix like repe or rep ne now so let us consider here an example scasb or scasw that is scan string byte or scan string word so this can be clearly understand so when this scan string byte instruction is executed that means here 
the contents which is present in ax register will be compared with the contents which is present in a string if it is word or the contents of al will be subtracted from the contents of contents of di okay so for example if you write like move al comma 00h okay that means here the value which is present in accumulator is 00 and move cx comma 0064h okay so here the counter value is 64 it represents that there are 100 bytes present in a string okay so the hexadecimal equivalent value of 100 bytes it is 64h which we have loaded into cx register and move di comma 5000h so let us consider a string which is present uh, in 5000h location and cld okay so this cld instruction generally we will use uh, in the programs in order to perform string manipulations why because here when string operations are performed okay so we are going to use the index registers especially si and di so in order to update that index registers we have to use the direction flag okay so we have to use the direction flag with the help of the instruction cld or std if you are using cld instruction in the program the direction flag will be cleared that means df is equal to 0 and it will be operating in auto increment mode the index registers will be automatically incremented by 1 if the data is byte size or they will be incremented by 2 if the data content available is of word size and in both the cases the counter value will be decremented by 1 and for each operation it will be decremented keep on decrementing by 1 and after comparison of all these 64 uh, uh, contents which is present in the string uh, di the counter value will become 0 and cld and next we have to write rep s c a s b repeat scan string byte okay so that means here for example here this 00h is the um, data which you are going to load into the accumulator so this 00 so for example if you are considering here the destination and you are initializing this destination with the 5000h location and it is having some content which is of byte size for example assume okay so 5001 this is 5002 and this is 5003 okay so some byte size data will be available okay so here but what is there in the accumulator al here there is 00 okay so here the content which is present in accumulator will be compared with the content present in the destination now it may find the same value 00 anywhere in the destination location or in another case it may not find the same value 00 in the destination location so for example if the same value what is present in al is there in the destination when they are compared the result will be zero so in that case the zf flag will be set okay so if this 00 is not found anywhere in the destination location in that case the zf flag will be equal to zero not set okay so this repeat instruction generally if you use this instruction as a prefix to scan string byte or compare string byte okay irrespective of the zero flag setting or resetting it will be operating that means whether the zero flag is set or not no problem the execution will be continued until the cx value will become zero but if we are using instead of this rep are the two repeat instructions like rep or rep and e instruction as a prefix to this scan string byte or compare string byte as a prefix okay so they will be operating especially based on the zero flag condition zero flag condition whether they are set or not set so based on that the control will be 
quitting or the control will be continuing until Cx becomes 0. Okay. Now, so for example, uh, in this previous case also, instead of this uh, REP, SCA, SB, we can use REP, E, SCA, SB. Okay. Or we can use REP, N, E, S, C, A, S, B. So, scan string byte means AL minus contents of the string. Okay. So, here REP, N, E, S, C, A, S, B. That means up to where this operation will be continued means until the ZF is equal to 1 or CX is equal to 0, it is going to quit. Okay, uh, that means when it is going, when this condition is going to reach, the operation will be quit. So, this REP, NE, SCA, SB, when this operation will be executed means here, if the ZF is equal to 0 or CX is equal to 0. So, if any of these uh, two conditions, any of these two conditions are met, then the operation is going to quit. Okay. So, this REPE or REPNE, these two instructions especially, they will be dependent on the setting or resetting of the zero flag. And next string instruction is load string byte or load string word. Load string byte or load string word. Okay. Now, so this load string byte means, this load string byte instruction, it is going to, uh, for example, if this instruction is executed, load instruction, the contents of SI, contents of contents of SI will be loaded into the contents of accumulator. Okay. So, loading means the contents which is present in SI will be loaded into the accumulator. Now, so here, uh, the accumulator you can consider is either AL or AX based on the size of the content which is present in a string. Okay. So, the string can be stored in DS and SI register. Now, so this SI also index register will be updated based on this direction flag only. Now, so if you want to repeatedly load the data, okay, if you want to repeatedly load the data means you have to make the df flag is equal to 0. That means you have to use the instruction CLD. Then only the contents of SI, here you are going to consider SI, then only the contents of SI will be automatically incremented by 1. Okay, if it is incremented by 1 every time, the content present in the SI location will be loaded into the AL register. Now, so, for example, uh, if we take this uh, load string byte or load string w uh, word instruction, when this instruction is executed, what happens means the contents of SI will be loaded into the contents of AL. Okay. So, for example, if you are considering the location of this CS as 5000H and the index register SI, location as 2000H. Okay. So, what is the starting address here? The starting address, the starting address will be calculated with segment address into 10 plus offset address. Okay. So, here if you see here 5000 into 10 plus 2000 we will get. So, totally 52000 is the starting address of the string. Now, so consider here in this uh, 52,000 H location, so there is a value Fe, Fe. So, when this uh, load Sb instruction is executed, now the value which is present in this uh, location will be moved into Al. Now, the value of AL will become the value which is present in this SI, FE, will be moved into AL. Now, the value of AL will be FE. 
okay so this is the operation that is performed when this uh, uh, load instruction is function and the next string instruction is stosb or stosw so here stosb represents store string byte or word store string byte or word okay so this store string byte uh, store instruction is exactly opposite to the load instruction so when this store instruction is uh, load instruction is executed the contents of si will be loaded into the accumulator okay so this store instruction is exactly opposite to the load instruction so when load instruction is executed the contents which is present in uh, accumulator will be loaded into the destination index register and here this instruction will not affect any flags after copying the content the index registers will be automatically incremented or decremented based on the direction flag so here also in order to store generally we have to make the df flag is equal to 0 in order to continue the operation until cx value is 0 we have to use the instruction cld now so here the contents which is present in uh, al register will be loaded into the destination now all these are the string operations that are available in the instruction set of 8086 microprocessor so for all these string instruction we can use repeat instruction as a prefix rep instruction simply it will be operating irrespective of the zero flag but whereas this repe or repe or repz and repne and repnz these two instructions can also be used as a prefix but only for some string instructions we can use but these two instructions especially they will be operating based on the condition of the zero flag okay thank you like share and subscribe hit the bell icon for more updates